right, I will call the Transit Commission to order. For those in the council chamber, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Okay, members here, let me see who's all online. Online, we got Ryan, Chief Domagowski, Trey, um, not seeing Mike or the mayor or Charles at all. So, or whose caller? Did someone just hop on the call? Hi, this is Roy. All right, Roy's here then. All right, sounds good. Jeff, you're here, right? Yep, he's here. There he is. Chief is on, yep. Trey's on, Roy and Ryan. No, Chad's not on. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, folks. Roy? Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our November 17th meeting? Uh, make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Dean. Second. second. All right. There's been a second. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. All right, moving along here. Um, 3.1, resolution number 143, 2021, resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the 2021 general contract between Sheboygan County Health and Human Services Department and the city of Sheboygan regarding transportation for elderly and disabled individuals. I will turn it over to the transit director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is the uh, agreement uh, between Sheboygan County and the city of Sheboygan uh, to provide uh, paratransit services on behalf of Sheboygan County. Uh, this is an annual agreement, I believe. Uh, it's for about $360,000 uh, to provide paratransit services, like I said. Um, typically, there's uh, one or two revisions. Uh, this is the first. Hopefully, there aren't any revisions after this. Um, but this was already uh, uh, taken up at council in January and uh, just seeking uh, the uh, commission's uh, support for this resolution and uh, recommending to council for approval. All right, any questions for Derek? All right, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. Motion by Dean, second by Mike. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.2, resolution number 173, 2021, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a grant agreement with the state of Wisconsin and to make necessarily necessary expenditures under the grant agreement in order to take advantage of the state of Wisconsin Volkswagen, Volkswagen Mitigation Transit Capital Assistance Grant Program. <laughs> That was a little muffle there. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, try typing that uh, several times in a in a grant application. Uh, this is one of the uh, uh, one of the exciting uh, grants that we were awarded uh, in 2020. Um, back in 2000, I think 18 or 19, we took advantage of round one by uh, being awarded one bus uh, through the program, which we took receipt of last year. Uh, in round two, we were awarded uh, six five uh, six fixed route uh, buses through the uh, same Volkswagen mitigation program. Uh, after talking with city officials, uh, it was in our best interest to uh, request and uh, accept four buses. Uh, by doing so in conjunction with the other six that we were awarded through other grant programs, uh, we would uh, bring the remaining uh, total of 10 buses that are under useful life in our fleet um, and replace all 10 of them um, which would put us at a, a very good uh, situation as far as uh, vehicles go. So 
um, talking with uh, City Administrator Wolf, uh, we decided on four vehicles. And so uh, I did talk with Department of Administration officials. We did work it out that we would accept four out of the six awarded. And so they presented the attached agreement for those four buses. Awesome. I think that's a really great thing that we took advantage of. Any questions for Derek at all? So be looking for uh, your support of this resolution and recommending to council for uh, its approval of this grant agreement. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Uh, second. Motion by Mike, second by Dean. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> Chair votes aye, that's approved. 3.3, third and fourth quarter and final 2020 reports for Shoreline Metro and the parking utility. Derek. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in front of you uh, in your packet uh, is included the third and fourth quarter reports uh, for transit and parking. Um, I didn't go into uh, breaking out the quarters. So I just kind of lumped it all together. Um, the long and short of it is, is it was a very difficult year as it was for many city departments as well as private businesses. Um, ridership was down uh, in both of our services around 45% uh, for the year. Um, really disheartening in our organization, our department after having uh, nearly a 54% increase over the previous uh, eight years or so and uh, encroaching on 700,000. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic um, cut us short by about half that. So. Um, in front of you is, again, our report. Uh, everything that goes along with lower ridership, such as revenue, uh, our statistics as far as um, revenue trips per mile, they were all significantly impacted. Um, as far as the good news, I'll get to that uh, and maybe our uh, annual report, but um, for now, uh, transit and uh, parking utilities, uh, revenues were substantially down. Uh, parking, however, did not uh, fare as bad. Uh, we were able to recoup um, uh, rebound faster as far as that goes uh, with revenues and things. <clears throat> we did make a concerted effort in 2020 to reduce our expenses and uh, try to uh, really uh, hold, down, uh, hold, down, hold down any uh, uh, of the assessments that uh, would be uh, forthcoming. Um, as of uh, last week, we were able to successfully, I think, uh, come in well under budget for our assessments, uh, at least initially, um, that will be uh, uh, sent out uh, a little later this year. So um, all in all, uh, we, we survived, I think, 2020, but uh, looking to rebound in 2021 and years to come, uh, both in uh, revenue and ridership on the transit side and, again, revenue and uh, controlling expenses on the parking side. So um, here I'm just looking for your support uh, of the uh, report and your approval. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the report. Is there a motion? There's been a second. motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions for Derek? I guess I just said one. How, how are things looking currently with, you know, is, is, has there been an increase now over the, or has the weather kind of been, also a factor? Uh, ridership has been, you know, we've noticed increases here over the last six weeks, eight weeks. Um, I think people's confidence returning to work, um, things opening up, kids going back to school a little bit um, has, uh, we have seen the increases. Uh, we were running at uh, 15 capacity uh, for quite a while uh -huh. and we were actually encroaching on that quite a bit. So we did raise um, our ridership uh, capacity to 25. Um, and that was done oh, about a month ago or so. Um, and so now with the students coming back uh, in what, next Monday, um, we expect that, you know, we might be butting up against that again, but we do have extra buses in place. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty much set there, but we are seeing, we are seeing people come back, which is good, good. Uh, both on fixed road and paratransit. So paratransit is um, still down probably about 30 or 40%, but it's, it's rebounding, rebounding, so. Good to hear. With with the the capacity <coughs> limits, has that been an impact at all? Have have you had to have like like if you're I, I just probably would, would see like if you're picking up folks at a school and you got a bunch of kids, you know, does do you have to say hey you got to wait for the next one or 
Have you had have you had any of those instances at all? Or? They're very isolated. Uh, when we were at 15, uh, it was it was an issue. Um, we were starting to get to a point where it was going to be a regular occurrence during certain parts of the day. Sure. Um, and, and really, to be honest with you, we had to raise it because the weather, uh, winter is not a time where we want to leave people stranded. Um, so we kind of weighed that out and made it appropriate to raise it to 25. Um, you know, it, people take some of this stuff literally. So if we uh, have a marking of 15 on our buses and we put 18 people on there, uh, just because it's really cold out or the weather's bad, you know, it tends to send bad vibes. So we wanted to make sure that our message was clear that, you know, we were we were doing what was appropriate and safe at this time. And that was increasing our uh, overall capacity so that all of our customers were aware of what our standard would be. Okay. Any other questions for Derek? Is there a motion? Was there? Okay. Yep, motion on the floor. There we go. Yeah. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the quarterly reports, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.4, presentation of the transit and parking utility annual reports. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I won't go through these uh, in depth for you, uh, but I did want to uh, just kind of highlight some of the um, items inside our reports. Uh, so in front of you again, uh, our annual Shoreline Metro report and our annual uh, parking um, report. Uh, these were actually put out quite a bit faster and sooner this year um, with uh, requirements from uh, City Administrator Wolf on uh, including five years worth of data. Here we chose to uh, include ridership data um, for uh, the transit part, which I'll start with. Um, but really, uh, you know, we, we talked about it being a very difficult year, um, but, you know, when you're in essential service and you're out there every day and you're providing services much like you know, our police department, fire, uh, many city services, um, you know, you, you can't help but uh, wonder and see where the, where the good things are, and we had plenty of those things. Um, so I, I invite you guys to read through the report. Again, I'm not gonna go through it, uh, you know, word for word. Um, as I already stated, the ridership was down. You can see the figures on here. Um, on the front, you know, I'm really proud of my staff uh, at Shoreline Metro, um, and you as city officials elected, um, and members of our transit commission. Uh, you have one heck of a, a transit staff. Um, they, they fought tooth and nail. Uh, they, were, they were brave, they were dedicated, they were passionate. Um, you know, I have to say that uh, I, I haven't worked with a better group of people um, during a diff more difficult time uh, in my short 13 years in transit. So really proud of my staff and I wanna say thank you to them um, and all the hard work that they did. On the back side, uh, you'll see the uh, ridership data uh, that had been trending um, since 2010. Um, obviously, again, 2020 was a very difficult year, but we hope to rebound and bring those numbers back up. <coughs> There's uh, uh, inside the numbers for both uh, fixed route and for Metro Connection for your review. Um, we had some new people join our team, uh, which is on the left side of the uh, back side. So we're thrilled to have uh, those four members on our team. And then lastly, I uh, just wanna highlight some of the changes that uh, the Transit Commission had uh, either blessed and approved or um, entrusted in myself and my team to implement. And that was the elimination of uh, tokens on the fixed route, transfer slips on the fixed route, and then moving to a tokenless uh, system on our paratransit. Um, I, I will say, and, and maybe Anne, if she wants to join in, um, you know, anytime you, you change things drastically and you kind of, you know, hit somebody and get them on a new trajectory, you always risk that it could go bad. Um, I, I think the impact of the elimination of transfers and tokens probably went over about as painless as, as possible. And I was really, uh, uh, really thrilled about that, not only during a pandemic, but trying to mediate any issues that would come up from that. Um, I think passengers really enjoy the fact that we coupled that reduction and that elimination of the transfers and tokens with the new six pack um, at a reduced rate. We've seen day passes, just um, sales go through the roof. So, um, so our passengers had responded very well. Uh, we're, in the, we're in the middle right now of doing a, a brief survey with our paratransit customers. And I've gotten about a dozen of those back so far. They've got another week or two to get those back. Um, but again, uh, responses in relation to the changes and our COVID responses 
um, have scored very, very high marks. Um, so a lot of that relates back to 2020. So again, um, great stuff out of the, uh, the transit department um, over the last year. <clears throat> and then if you allow me just to touch base on the parking utility, uh, we had also some good things happening. Um, again, uh, focus here, try to be a little proactive and uh, educate customers. Um, so my fo uh, focus this year was the winter weather. Um, and in spite of our recent uh, expenditures in snow plowing um, and even fighting through the pandemic, you know, safety was never uh, a question. Uh, we made sure that we took care of our customers, parking lots, things like that uh, during the pandemic. It uh, was also a, a first, uh, first color change of our permits. Uh, every two years, they, they will go through a cosmetic change. Uh, so we moved away from the red and pink and we've got uh, navy blue and sky blue now. Uh, permits have gone over, I think, uh, rather successfully, and uh, we continue to uh, enjoy the benefits of that. Again, wanna say thanks to our uh, partners, uh, Otter Creek, uh, for providing flowers again this year, and then also our uh, friends at Town and Country Garden Club for planting. Uh, we had another uh, successful year uh, in spite of the uh, challenging times. So thank you to them. And then the last page, or back page, excuse me, uh, just talking about assessments by year uh, per district. Um, so the, the five year or thereabout uh, timeline and information I chose to provide here were uh, assessments by district, uh, per, or by year per district and expenses by year per district. Um, again, uh, preliminary numbers for 2020 are gonna show uh, that assessments are gonna be once again uh, below budgeted and below what they were in 2019. Um, and even to the point that pad one, uh, it was about $80,000 last year. It's looking to be less than $25,000 this year for the assessment. So um, credit again, my guys for, uh, you know, really, really trying to work through challenging times and, and you know, kind of doing a lot more with a lot less. So <clears throat> those are the reports for your consideration, Mr. Chair. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. All right, any questions for Derek? Mr. Chair, yep. Uh, Derek, uh, last year we uh, had some complaints from the people in the downtown pad, and I'm just wondering. I mean, you have brought the uh, the the, uh, the higher level of of, uh, of cost down. Uh, last year we ended up delaying uh, payments and giving them some extra grace period. Do you anticipate anything like that's going to be needed this year? Uh, there, th we had a preliminary discussion. Um, if you remember, uh, Mr. Mayor, last year we had a little bit of snafu with getting out the uh, assessments. Um, I think the, the pandemic definitely played a little bit of, a, uh, of, uh, of an issue with that. Um, and then also, uh, you know, with slapping somebody with a, with a hefty size bill that perhaps wasn't as big the year before um, in the heart of a pandemic is, is not always the best thing to do. So. Um, I think the, the strategy again this year is that we, we wanna get our ducks in a row. We wanna make sure that not only are we sending out one invoice that's accurate, but also I'm, I'm gonna accompany those invoices with a personalized letter that talks about our, um, our maintenance and our upkeep and the, and the dedication of my crew to the parking utility uh, to try to streamline some questions and, and maybe issues that come along with it. Um, certainly I wanna be able to take responsibility. Um, I don't uh, necessarily, have to have people call the mayor's office or finance or uh, Chad Pelishek's department and you know uh, talk about those things. It's it's my group that you know maintains all this. But I think preliminary right now we're looking at um, extending that out and possibly looking at uh, September deadline again. Um, if, if Chad's on the phone, um, if he wants to elaborate on that, he he may. Okay, so Chad's not on. But yes, I, I believe there's going to be something in the works for you, Mr. Mayor. Good. Thank you for that report. Any further questions for Derek? All right, seeing none, are there any motions to accept the report? I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Motion by Dean, second by Mike. All those in favor of accepting the report, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed, chair votes aye, that is accepted. Moving along, 3.5, resolution number 171 2021 a resolution accepting and approving the revised public transit agency safety program for shoreline metro and placing on file 
atmospheric. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for those uh, commission members, I remember we did bring this plan to you uh, last year in, in 2020. Um, FTA uh, originally had, make it, had made it mandatory that uh, this needed to be in place mid-year through uh, 2020. Um, they then pushed it out with the pandemic uh, to the end of 2020, and now we are currently sitting on an implementation date of mid-2021. Uh, so the opportunity was upon us to uh, have FTA uh, review our uh, PTASP or a, pair tr or a public transit agency safety program. And uh, so we did take advantage of that. Uh, we've been working with uh, Jeff Ag Ohio from Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission who's on the phone. I'd like to invite him to speak in a second. Um, but we did have to make some significant changes. Uh, we, we were very um, thankful that FTA did uh, take a look at several sections and make some critical changes to it. Uh, in the long run, it will help us with our implementation of this very important plan, but also it should uh, spearhead any issues that we might have in future uh, federal triennial reviews. So um, we, we felt that the changes were significant enough um, that we would bring them for uh, your attention. Uh, Jeff, um, did you wanna say anything about the, the PTASP and maybe uh, some of the critical changes that were made? The only thing I would mention is that we've been through quite a few um, back and forths with the Federal Transit Administration. They have a uh, public transit agency safety plan technical advisory center, and uh, they've worked with uh, Jack Sawinski, who's on their staff there, and our staff to uh, edit the document. Um, the, uh, the changes don't really fundamentally affect your, um, your targets for a public transit agency safety, but they're more uh, semantics and things like that. Uh, we, um, we first uh, approved this back in September, and we made uh, three rounds of edits uh, working with Federal Transit Administration. The first batch were in uh, late November, another batch in late January, and then uh, uh, another batch here the very first of February. Uh, Chris Garcia, who uh, works with me here at the, uh, at the Regional Planning Commission, is our new transportation planner. Uh, he graduated with his master's from uh, Florida State University this past year. He's worked with me to uh, place this in a nice in-design format and uh, made uh, the vast majority of the edits uh, to this document. I think Jer uh, Jack and Derek have been working with us on this probably since what, like mid-year last year, I think? Yeah, it, it's been a while, Jeff. Yeah. Mi this, mo is, uh, this is one that we've ever done, so um, I'm sure it'll, um, like the ADA plans we did several years ago, this will get easier as, as uh, future drafts come along. Yeah, I, I agree, Jeff. Thank you to you and your staff for assisting us. Uh, primarily, the changes are contained in Chapter 3, the Safety Assurance. It's the one chapter that most all transit agencies, according to the FTA review, uh, struggles with. Um, and it's not that they're not doing it, it's uh, putting it into documentation format that will be easy and readily access accessible for future reviews of the plan. So we, where we struggled was how we documented the things that we were doing. So um, that was uh, critical in, in making this understandable and accessible for future reviews. So um, if there is no questions on it, uh, staff is recommending the acceptance and approval of uh, this, revo uh, this resolution, excuse me, regarding the Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan um, and place the document on file. Just a, a note that uh, once the document is approved uh, here and at the council level, um, then we will start our implementation of this and uh, we will have this implemented well before the July 2021 requirement even if there is an extension. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we adopt and accept the Sheboygan Transit Development Program and place it on file. All right. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye, that is approved. Thanks for putting in the work on that one. All right, 3.6, resolution number 172-2021, resolution accepting the 2021-2025 Transit Development Program and placing on file. 
<clears throat> All right. Um, in front of you is our uh, latest uh, transportation development program uh, for years covering 2021 to 2025. Um, I would like to uh, defer to Jeff to uh, perhaps give an overview of this program. Um, but before I do so, I, I would just like to say um, I've really never been part of a, a development plan that uh, was actually pretty much implemented before it was approved. Um, <laughs> but due to the circumstances surrounding COVID and uh, you know us really trying to uh, mitigate uh, the exposures and the safety uh, risks with providing public transportation, um, many of the items, uh, if you remember in particular transfers, which was brought to the commission level either, I, I don't think it was last year, I think it was 2019 uh, for approval. Um, you know, we ended up turning that around and, and saying, you know, as part of our TDP that, you know, these are things that we want to do, but we also need to do them sooner than later. Um, and so we were able to take advantage of not only planning, but also implementing. Um, so it was, it was a little unusual, um, but nevertheless, a very successful uh, uh, development plan. Um, so I'd like to turn it over to Jeff for his comments um, on the plan development. Details regarding individual routes and how they operate. 
Thank you, Jeff, for those comments. Uh, additionally, I'd just like to add that the TDP is a, is a planning document. Um, it's not actually required by FTA, but it's strongly recommended that we go through these every uh, five years. We've actually had a little bit of a gap here, uh, close to four or five years between our last TDP, um, but uh, able to uh, finally get uh, this one done after a couple years of uh, working through some other uh, issues. Um, also want to remind uh, that when you support the document and approve the document, you're not necessarily approving the individual items inside the document. Um, Jeff did talk about uh, the recommended uh, alteration to our service day. Uh, those are things that we'd like to do, but those individual uh, changes uh, would still be subjected to either transit commission approval and or uh, a public hearing uh, because it might impact our uh, transit services to the magnitude that um, public hearing would be required. So um, all, I'm, all I'm asking today is that you guys um, would receive the document and uh, uh, approve the document um, and then anything in the future that we bring forward or uh, I'd like to maybe review this, you know, maybe at a future meeting and just kind of talk about the interest of some of the items that we haven't done yet and then um, get a strategy together for that. So today it's just merely accepting the document and recommending it to council for approval and file. All right, thanks Derek and Jeff for all your work on that one. Um, any questions for, for Derek or Jeff at all? Mr. Like, Chairman, I'd just like to uh, thank Jeff and Derek and the rest of the committee members that serve with uh, uh, me on that uh, committee. 
that uh, was a pretty extensive uh, set of meetings, and I think we really produced a nice result and, and give you uh, a real roadmap for the future. So with that, I'd move to accept the report as presented. All right, Mike has moved to accept it. Uh, second. Second by Dean. Any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the document, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Thank you, guys. Moving along, 3.7 director's report. Derek? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, before I get into the director's report, I would just like to uh, wish a few members on the Transit Commission uh, good luck in their primary elections today. Uh, Mayor Vandersteen and Alder uh, Ryan Sorensen and uh, Chief Domagowski uh, for school board. So good luck to you guys uh, in your primary elections today. Um, on the director's report, uh, a couple things that I'll probably go through maybe in a little bit more length, but again, in respect of time, um, you guys can uh, go back to this if you haven't read it yet and uh, follow up with me with any questions. Again, COVID-19, uh, we're, we're operating at regular hours right now on weekdays. Uh, we continue to do demand response only on Saturdays. Um, we are, uh, we are uh, hiring drivers right now. We're a little low. Um, so until we can kind of bulk back up, uh, we will probably be keeping our uh, paratransit service uh, or demand response service only on Saturdays. Um, and again, some of these other items, uh, we continue to collect fares, uh, premium services that were implemented by Metro Connection customer or for Metro Connection customers have been received well. Uh, we've recently um, uh, implemented the federal mask order requiring all customers employees to wear a mask uh, while on the bus and at our transfer station. So we, we're working through that. Uh, currently, we have uh, no team members out due to COVID-19. Um, as a matter of fact, since uh, pretty much the beginning of December, we've been very minimally impacted. Um, so again, a, a thank you to uh, uh, Transit Commission for entrusting me to uh, carry out some of the day-to-day uh, -day items that we've needed to do to keep staff uh, and customers safe. And then also uh, to my staff for their dedication. Um, it's, it's really shown. So um, as far as COVID goes, that's uh, pretty much all I'm going to update you on. We talked about the annual reports today. I've briefed you on the parking assessments for 2020. Um, again, those assessments will be coming out uh, sometime probably about March um, with payment due later this year. I'm happy to report item number four, our roof project is done. We have a, a new roof and, and decking. Um, so we're, we're thrilled about that. So that'll give us some longevity on our building. Um, our federal trainee review that was originally scheduled for last August um, is now going to take place the week of May 17th through 21st virtually. Uh, so we look forward to uh, working through the challenges of that. But um, our last trainee review in 2017, we scored a perfect uh, zero finding. So um, anytime you come out perfect, you got a target on your back, but we're up for it. So let's repeat. Uh, bus purchases, as Jeff said in our TDP review, uh, we are in the process of uh, putting together orders for 10 fixed route buses and two paratransit buses. So uh, that delivery could be as soon for paratransit buses as the end of this year and fixed route buses by fall of, of next year. Uh, number seven, Town of Sheboygan service. Uh, we've had some uh, talks with some officials from the town about extending uh, possible uh, expansion of public transit to the township. Uh, we haven't really gone into much detail at this point, but wanted to make the Transit Commission aware that uh, there are some uh, preliminary discussions about uh, creating public transit solutions for the town of Sheboygan. So again, I'll keep you posted as these things develop. Um, parking utility team, we just had a little bit of a changeover. Uh, congratulations to our parking lead, uh, Philip, uh, who retired last October, and uh, we've been able to do some internal promoting and then also some external hiring. Uh, and we have a great team uh, together for our parking utility. And then uh, lastly, again, thank you to everybody um, on the Transit Commission, uh, my team, City Administrator Wolf, for your ongoing support and direction uh, during this pandemic. I truly appreciate uh, your trust and uh, allowing me to uh, run our organization uh, the way that it, that we have been. Uh, I think it's been safe, I think it's been productive, and uh, we're excited to uh, certainly move past this pandemic and uh, continue what 
we were doing uh, prior. So um, that's my director's report, Mr. Chair. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Derek, for putting in all that. Any questions for Derek at all? Is there a motion to accept the report? I'll make a motion to accept the report. Second. Motion by Dean, second by Mike. Any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the report, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye, that's uh, accepted. Um, we've exhausted the agenda, next meeting is TBD. Is there a motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Dean, second by Mike. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 540. Thank you, everybody.